Check this out. Check what's underneath this table. So a little over six years ago, my wife and I purchased this couch. And uh, one of the things that we first did was we identified that the ottoman was huge and it'd be the perfect spot for kind of a, a coffee table. Um, now at the time, I had barely gotten into woodworking at all and I didn't really know exactly what I was doing. So I built kind of my first version of this coffee table. Now, after, um, now after a couple of years, it was pretty worn down and didn't look fantastic. Um, I talked to my wife about it and we decided to kind of redo the coffee table. Now, when I decided to redo this coffee table, I kind of, I had the idea of, Hey, what if we put on the bottom side of the coffee table, sort of like a game table surface that my wife and I could, um, you know, flip over, we could play some games on. It would be kind of a nice surface for us to, to play a card game or whatever game that we happen to be playing on. And this is kind of what we come up with. Um, real quick, before I show you the game table portion of it, construction of this is very simple. This is one by fours on the outside. This is a half inch piece of plywood on the top. Now, originally, you know, like I said, I didn't really know what I was doing the first time when I built this. And so, I use pocket holes as every good amateur woodworker does. Um, later on for the second build, I realized that pocket holes were too close. I had some screws that were almost sticking through the top. So instead of doing pocket holes, um, I just use good clamping, good measurements and wood glue. Um, and that has held up really well. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at the actual game table itself. We flip this over. Yeah, so like I said, the uh, most of the tables actually built of these one by fours on the edges, that half inch plywood at the bottom. And then recently I watched a fantastic video of a uh, YouTuber who made a, um, a game table, but instead of the classic um, game table surfaces, he used leather for his surface. Um, so I thought it'd be a good idea to try that for mine and it worked great. Um, this is actually fake leather, faux leather from Amazon, very cheap. I think this was $17 for this piece of leather. Um, and I use actually qu quite a bit of 3D printing for this project. Um, I'll show you here, but along the edges, or how I held this in, is the bottom surface here is a piece of, it's, it's slightly bigger than eighth inch plywood that I got from Home Depot. I measured that as close as I could to the inside of this table. I get, and I gave it a little bit of extra room so that I could kind of secure it down. But then I, I 3D printed these edge pieces that were kind of a interference fit for the leather. And this is a way to kind of secure the leather and it's not even glued or held down any other way, just the plastic from the 3D print really just holds it in place. So actually under here is something very cool that I was kind of referencing earlier in the video. So there's actually a really cool hidden part of this table. Uh, I had the idea at the time to, um, to use this as kind of a crokinole surface. And I thought this is almost like the edges for a crokinole board. Um, and if you don't know what a crokinole board is, here, let me grab one and show you. Here is that crokinole board. Um, fantastic game, by the way. Um, and so I had the idea of putting a steel plate on the bottom underneath here. And with the idea that I would put some magnets, which I know it's kind of hard to see here. Well, I'll zoom in and, and show you some close up shots of this, but, um, there's some rare earth magnets that I put on here and this guy just kind of 
snaps into place here in the middle. And now, I mean, if I really push it, that thing can move, but it's not going anywhere. It's a great surface that you can sit here and you can play crokinole on. So surprisingly, I used my 3D printer quite a bit on this project. Um, and the second way that I use my 3D printer is I, I 3D printed the, the pegs for the crokinole board. This is something in my past crokinole board builds I've always struggled with. The pegs are typically made out of this, um, this, this rubber tubing, which is very hard to cut and get perfect square cuts. Um, and I started thinking about it and I was like, TPU is basically rubber. It's a plastic rubber. And I wondered if you could print that and if that would work for crokinole pegs. And this actually does work fantastic for crokinole pegs. Um, I 3D printed these. Um, I made the file. I took measurements with calipers to make sure that they match up with the, the rest of the crokinole pegs that are out there. Um, if you would like the STL file and would like to try to print these yourself, I'll link that for free in the, uh, in the description below. So yeah, the, the crokinole pegs turned out fantastic. Um, I printed some extras of these. If people are interested in, in getting some, they don't have a 3D printer, um, let me know in the comments below. Maybe we can work something out. Um, I, could probably, I could probably send some of these to, to, to folks. Um, but yeah, that is the, the gaming table that I kind of built on the bottom side of this coffee table that fits over our ottoman. Um, in our living room. It's a great table, great surface to play games on. Um, I've just built it recently, so my wife and I haven't had a ton of time to break this in and play with it too much, um, but I think it's gonna be fantastic. I think it's gonna work really well for, uh, you know, we play Splendor Duel, um, we play um, Seven Wonders Duel, a lot of just different fantastic two-player card games. Um, and this is going to be, yeah, just a great surface for us to, um, you know, enjoy uh, an evening. Now, if you found this video interesting at all, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now, if you want to 3D print your own TPU crokinole pegs or some of these edges like I did for your own coffee table build, um, and you're not sure what 3D printer to use, take a look at this video here, which is going to have my recommendations for the best beginner 3D printer. It's the 3D printer that I use for both the side rails and for these crokinole pegs, and anybody can use it. Now, if you're curious on how I made this crokinole board, and this is one of my rougher ones, but if you're curious on how I made some nicer crokinole boards than this one, the link for that video is also shown right here.